Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to discuss Tabby's star. This unusual and mysterious star that we kind of know nothing about, that is producing unusual dimming effect that the scientists are absolutely baffled about. Today we're going to continue the series about this star, and we're going to talk about the new discoveries. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So if you haven't watched the previous part of Tabby Star, I made this video about uh, six months ago and you can check it out in the link that you see on the screen right now. This is essentially where I explain some of the findings and some of the mysteries behind it. But in a nutshell, we have discovered this unusual star. This was actually discovered by the project known as Planet Hunters, which basically uses volunteers to try to look for unusual patterns in um, star luminosity. And what uh, was discovered is that this star has actually been slowly decreasing in brightness over the past 100 or so years. So if I were to show you a graph, this is what it's kind of been doing. Maybe not so extreme, but it's been actually decreasing consecutively over the past 100 years. Interestingly, these uh, decreases in luminosity or brightness are not really predictable either. They seem to be random and they seem to be, to be happening for no apparent reason. And so in the last uh, few years or so, Kepler telescope has actually detected quite a lot of these dims um, of Tabby's star luminosity. And today scientists have no idea why it's been going on. So there's actually quite a lot of theories out there and none of them so far explain this really well. So in today's video, I actually wanted to recreate some of these theories because um, there was a very recent an um, announcement that not only did we actually confirmed that the Tabby star was, has been decreasing in luminosity, but we've also discovered that it's actually been a lot more dramatic than we thought before. So let's talk about the first sort of um, speculation here. And this is what the first hypothesis is. It's basically assumption that, uh, the assumption here is that this is a young star that still has um, planetary or early protoplanetary ring orbiting around it. It's basically still being developed. And so once in a while, this ring kind of obscures the star, making it uh, drop in, in brightness. Now, this kind of makes sense, except for two things. One is that it would still go back up in brightness once in a while. It would still uh, regain its brightness, if especially if the ring moved away from it. And two is that, uh, well, we know that this is not a young star, and we also have looked at this uh, region of space using infrared telescope, and if this actually had a protoplanetary ring, we would be able to detect a lot of infrared emissions from it. We've detected nothing. In other words, there seems to be no dust whatsoever. There seems to be nothing orbiting around the star that would make it dim like this. Another assumption or another hypothesis here is that, well, maybe there are these planets that orbit around um, Tabby star, also known as KIC 8462852, also known as WTF star, because honestly, when people discovered what's going on here, they, they were basically saying WTF. What kind of star is that? Anyway, so the assumption number two is that, well, if there are stars here, or sorry, if there are planets here, maybe w what we're witnessing right now is some sort of a planetary collision. And let's actually just recreate this. We're gonna slow down time. Maybe just maybe this is um, a planetary collision of really, really large magnitude where something really, really large collided with something else really, really large and created a huge amount of debris. So these are two random planets, one gas giant and one rocky uh, terrestrial planet. And uh, as it basically collides with one another, there's a lot of debris that's produced that then sort of obscures the star. Um, well, that's a possibility. I mean, this is, could definitely happen. And it's very likely that um, many stars have experienced this and maybe have even been dimmed by this effect. But once again, if we had uh, actually experienced this, or if we actually witnessed this, we would have actually been able to see quite a lot of debris uh, orbiting around this area and a lot of infrared emissions, but we saw nothing. So it's very unlikely that this is actually what happened for two reasons. One is that there's no infrared emissions, and two is that this is actually an extremely, extremely rare event. And this rare event um, happens very rarely. As a matter of fact, in our solar system, it may have happened a couple of times, maybe three times in the last five billion years. We know that this is how the moon was created, uh, and also possibly how Venus was also shifted in its orbit, but and possibly Neptune. But other than that, we don't really think it happens quite a lot. So witnessing such an event would be very, very unlikely. Hypothesis number three is that maybe, just maybe, what we're witnessing is a bunch of uh, really, really, really massive comets orbiting in a very sort of uh, eccentric 
elliptical orbit around Tabby's star and once in a while uh, basically covering the star so you might see it right now just covering the star kind of making it dim a little bit and then uh, basically leaving this path and going into its sort of elliptical orbit uh, so here i could only recreate this using these moons but basically this is a another possibility so these are all comets orbiting around uh, this particular star and actually the orbit should be a lot more elliptical so we're going to increase its eccentricity right about here. So there we go. So maybe just maybe this is what's happening. Very eccentric um, orbits, lots of different comets and covering sort of the star um, once in a while, but not particularly periodically. But the problem with this particular hypothesis is that we've also witnessed the dimming of the star by about 22%. In other words, this star decreased its... Uh luminosity by something like 22%. In other words, it became a lot, a lot dimmer. So I don't know if you can see this, but I'm actually decreasing dimness right now or luminosity, making it a lot, a lot uh, dimmer. And it's kind of hard to see from here, but there we're going to do it a little bit easier by changing its uh, temperature and color. So by 22%, which is actually surprisingly quite a lot. Uh, it's a it's a very, very dramatic drop. Um, a single planet orbiting around this star, like for example, if I were to place Jupiter right here, an actual, you know, normal Jupiter, and it will make it orbit around uh, this star. Every time Jupiter sort of crossed the pathway between the star and our point of view, basically every time it obscured the star, the luminosity would only drop by about 1%. So for this star to drop by 22%, it has to be a very, very, very massive object in front of it. So massive, as a matter of fact, that we don't really know what it could be. So it, it would have to be something ridiculously large to actually obscure it. So even this would not be 22%, but maybe something like this would cause this to decrease by about 22%. So that's a very, very massive object. Something like this would have to be either right in front of the star and we haven't detected anything there, or it would have to be a ridiculously large object on the outskirts uh, orbiting with somewhat unpredictable uh, period. Basically here, the period is a little bit less predictable than you would expect. And the last uh, suggestion here, or I guess the last hypothesis is very, very, very unusual. It's, uh, it suggests that maybe, just maybe, Tabby's star actually has some sort of an unusual alien structure around it. Now, this has many names, one of them is a Dyson Sphere, and as soon as I actually release this uh, simulation, it's, they're going to start orbiting around the star relatively fast and fun funkily, but um, something like this, basically constructed by a super intelligent extraterrestrial race, might actually cause this kind of effect. Um, but unfortunately, it's kind of unlikely, for, for obvious reasons, one of them being that, uh, well, we, we would have seen other effects and we also would have possibly detected some kind of an unusual signal, uh, but it's also one of the explanations, and wh this is why, why, one of the reasons why this star became so prominent in the media, because we've detected these unusual patterns of luminosity from it. And one of the reasons why it's possibly not this is uh, because in October of 2015, SETI Institute actually used their huge Allen telescope array to look for different radio emissions coming from the direction of the star. And well, guess what? They kind of found nothing. They found no radio signals, no uh, any kind of signal that might be attributed to extraterrestrial intelligence. And essentially kind of uh, this hypothesis was found to be very, 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 very unlikely. And you know what? I kind of agree with the idea of this not being aliens, but just being some kind of a phenomenon we haven't really seen yet, or a phenomenon we're not really considering just yet. We can't really, we can't seem to explain it. But nevertheless, there's actually going to be another study uh, beginning in, in October of 2016 using Green Bank Telescope, trying to discover some more signals or possibly something else that might suggest that maybe there is some kind of alien intelligent life here. Uh, but for now, though, we have no clue what's actually going on. Now, dimming of stars is actually not an unusual phenomenon. As a matter of fact, there's several other stars, uh, specifically younger stars that are not main sequence stars yet, that often have dimming um, that is either periodic or uh, less predictable. And usually the protoplanetary disk may actually cause even more unpredictable dimmings. But in this case, there seems to be nothing that would suggest that um, this is actually a young star. This is a star that's already mature and it shouldn't really have any protoplanetary disk. But there is, however, one more hypothesis and a possibility um, based on another sort of planetary system that we've discovered. Maybe, just maybe, uh, this particular system actually contains 
not one, not two, but several uh, planets, possibly gas giants, that have these humongous rings around them that are basically causing uh, the obscurity or the luminosity decrease of Tabby Star that you see in the back there. Now, we've actually detected at least one more planet uh, or exoplanet that has these huge rings around it. I've talked about this um, exoplanet previously, um, but maybe in this case, it's not just one, it's not just two, but several of them that are basically obscuring the star um, as they pass with their rings, with their funny rings in front of the um, Tabby Star. And as they're doing this, luminosity decreases and then goes back up a little bit. But um, this this might be the case. This might actually happen. But the problem with this particular hypothesis is that, well, uh, the luminosity of this star has still been decreasing um, quite consistently over the past 100 years. And a ring system, or I guess uh, planets with different ring systems, would not really explain this very well, unless somehow these rings, as you can see right here, uh, have been actually sort of stolen from these planets and are basically entering in some kind of um, asteroid-like belt that is slowly decreasing the overall luminosity if, if looked at from a distance. This is actually a pretty cool effect. All of these rings have actually been destabilized and stretched um, into a very like spaghetti-like structure that is essentially now dim in the star. Now, if this is the case, uh, then one day uh, they will actually probably stop being um, so unpredictable and eventually reach a very predictable pattern of dimming uh, and brightening of Tabby Star. But as of now, we're not really sure if this is actually what's happening or if any of these hypotheses are actually true. It will probably take us a while to figure this out. But hopefully within the next uh, several decades, we'll be able to see this star a little bit better and possibly discover what's really going on there. Until then, this is just a speculation and hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this video and possibly consider subscribing and liking this and even commenting in the comment box below. What do you think is happening here? What's wrong with this star? Why is it so dim? Why is it uh, becoming more dim every single year? I don't know, do you? Maybe we'll find out one day. And anyway, in the next video we're going to talk about something else related to math, sciences, space, or possibly something completely different, or maybe we'll just play a video game. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye. And I'm just going to accelerate time here and see what happens to all of these beautiful rings. And it looks like every single one of those rings created a kind of a vortex. If you, if you look from the top here, you can actually see a spiral going closer and closer to the star. That's actually kind of beautiful. Awesome. Maybe that's what's really happening here. I don't know.